thinking ahead, some drainage in a gap in the wall, then it's done. So I'm about to put a T-section into these, into one of these pipes for a branch so that I've got spring water over here in the workshop that I haven't built yet. I don't know which pipe carries rainwater and which pipe carries spring water. I've got the water running and I'm, I'm trying to hear it. I guess it's a 50-50 chance that I'll get it right. Fabulous. There's beauty to be found in a cement mixer. I'd have to admit to entertaining some doubts about the wisdom of this mud slinging exercise. You never know what you're doing till you do it. This wall needs another pillar at the end. Hey presto, a pillar. Well as you can see the rough stone wall is now capped. The next step is to bag it and I'm going to make up a mix that I'm going to paint on. I think it's a failure. So I'll declare it an undercoat. Oh, messy. Miss Messy. Well, it's, it's the mill, you see. <laughs> An exploding tree. I love that view through there with the yeah. Fred Williams. It's a start. Look at the trunk that goes around. It's taken 40 years to refurbish this spring, but I'm lucky it's a high spring so that I can gravity it through the water. There's going to be a wall over here. I'm going to draw the water from the spring below the surface. The surface is going to be here. I'm not the first person to work on this spring. In 1921, the owner was required to protect it from stock and provide a wooden trough connected by wooden pipes. And what do I find but one of the wooden pipes? I probably need to go another three courses higher. This is the blue clay. On Sunday there's a human sign protest. Santos want to depressure the aquifers that make this spring flow. From the very beginning, I've really had no idea what I'm doing here. With a spring, you have to be very responsive to what you find. I think somehow I have to fence out feral animals like pigs. <laughs> 